I'm Alice Milner, I'm a lecturer in Geography at Royal Holloway University of London and I'm also seconded to DEFRA on a NERC Policy Placement Fellowship and as part of that role I work with DEFRA's Chief Scientific Advisor for two days a week and look at how to improve the use of evidence and the use of science in DEFRA's decision making. Effective policy needs good evidence and policy makers are looking for evidence to help make their decisions, help make informed decisions and as scientists we're producing research, we're producing science which may be able to be used to help support evidence, um, the evidence base of different policy decisions. So if we don't actively engage it's almost like we're just throwing out our research into the, the world and hoping that it lands on the right desk, hoping that someone in a position of influence notices it in amongst all the other different bits of evidence which are flying around and also that they, they notice and they understand the implications of your research. Whereas if you actively engage, you take a much more targeted approach to make sure that your research, that your evidence will contribute to policy. Once you've published a paper, the best way to engage with policymakers is try to make your paper as easy to find. So try to make sure that your paper is published um, open access or make it available somewhere um, online. You can try to write a summary of your paper so that it's accessible to non-experts. A lot of policymakers aren't expert in their field. And so translating your research into a short, concise summary can really help make policymakers understand the implications of your, of your work. Uh, try to put your work in the policy context if you know what the policy context is and you could also send your summary along with the main paper to any contacts you have in policy. If you think your research and your findings are particularly relevant to policy, what you could do is try to arrange a meeting with policymakers or you could present your work at a conference where you know that policymakers will be present and Try to discuss your findings in the context of policy with them and try to understand a bit more about what, what their questions are, what their concerns are and how they could use your research to help them develop their policy. If you think it's appropriate, you could also join up with other people in your research area to develop joint statements, um, joint pieces of evidence or summaries which you can then discuss um, as a group to policymakers rather than just doing it on an individual basis. Also remember that when you send your paper, that's really just the first step in engaging with policymakers. It's not enough just to send it and expect that it will be read and that it will be considered. So try to engage with policymakers after you've shown them your paper, after you've discussed your paper with them, so that you can then take the conversation further throughout the, the um, development of any policy. Once you've had initial discussions with policymakers, it can help you as a researcher think more about what some of the problems are, what some of the concerns are of policymakers. So that can help inform any future research you do following on from your initial research. Before you publish, you can do several things to maximise the impact of your research. The best way is to co-develop your research with someone in policy or with a policy organisation so that you're actually developing and designing the research together to get those mutual benefits where you're answering the scientific questions that you really want to answer but you're also developing and creating output which benefits policy. So when you're designing a research project you want to be discussing with policymakers what they need, what they would like to see, and these discussions can take quite a lot of time, so always start early. Engage early and remember that policymakers are, are busy people, so it can often take a while to get in contact with the right person. But even just having a short conversation, even having um, a short email exchange with a policymaker can really help 
design your research in a way that has outputs which are helpful to policy. When you're preparing a publication, think about the audience that you're aiming to reach. So be very careful about the use of jargon and the use of your language. And remember that most policymakers aren't experts in the field that they're working in. So always try to communicate to a non-expert audience and also make it easy for policymakers or, or other um, organisations to understand what the implications of your research are. So include a section on the policy relevance or think about in your abstract what a policymaker may be thinking when they're reading the abstract. So what? What does it mean for policy? What would you want a policymaker to do with your findings? If you can include just one sentence in the abstract, that can really help policymakers understand what to do with your, with your research. Also, bear in mind that the title and the abstract are often the only things that are available, freely available to policymakers um, when looking at journal articles, and they can be really important for them deciding whether they're actually going to read the full text or not. So make your title informative, make sure you're using the key words and it is communicating the main points of your paper. And a stru structured abstract can be really helpful with that as well. It gives enough detail for a policymaker to understand what you've done and why it's important. Spending time in a government department has made me think really differently about the way I do research. Before I started, I had quite simple ideas about the way that policy was made. I imagined um, lots of policy makers sitting, reading academic papers, considering what the findings were in each of those papers and tweaking um, policy to fit in line with emerging evidence. But from working in DEFRA and experiencing the way that policy is made, it really brought it home to me about how complex and multi-dimensional policy is. You've got all the different factors, you've got economic factors, legal factors, practical factors, um, which are really important, as well as public opinion. So academic research is only one aspect of policy making. And so for me, that was a really eye-opening um, experience to see that that's, there's all the different factors that contribute to, to policy. So the way I do science has now changed from that experience. I spend a lot more time co-developing my research with policymakers. I think about what I want to answer as a scientist, but also what may be helpful to policymakers. And the way I communicate has changed. I now know that everything I write has to be short. It has to be short and as clear as possible. Lengthy documents won't be read. Um, and the onus is on me as a researcher to help policymakers understand what my research findings are telling them and why that's important for policy. It's often assumed that there's different approaches needed to communicate or work with civil servants, ministers, other scientists in, in government departments. But really it's important to remember that everyone's an individual. Different people like to communicate in different ways. So if you're going to be working with a team or an individual for some amount of time, you can ask them how they prefer to be um, communicated to, how they prefer to receive information. There are quite a lot of differences between policy and academia, and it's worth understanding some of those differences, in particular things like the timescale. Academics can work on one issue for, for years, whereas in policy you may be having to provide answers in, in minutes or hours or days. Um, also there's quite a difference in language and the way that language is used between in policy and in academia. So spending time and understanding some of those differences can help engage better with policymakers. There are a few general things that you can do for civil servants, ministers, any type of policymaker. Always keep things short, keep things concise and clear as possible, especially written information. If you have long, lengthy, complex documents, they're very unlikely to be read. So make sure you include an executive summary. If your executive summary goes over several pages, try to condense that down into one or two paragraphs or one side of A4. It's much more likely to, to be read by those different types of policymakers. If you're aiming to talk to a minister, 
always try to think about the wider picture. Why is it important and why would the public be interested and why would the minister need to consider policy in a different way? And try not to bombard people with information. As researchers, as academics, it's really tempting to provide lots of detail, lots of information about our research, but keep it simple and if they need more information, they'll come back to you and, and ask for it. Scientific societies can play a really big role in helping researchers engage with policymakers. From my experience, a lot of researchers don't know where to start when they're trying to engage with policy. Also, policymakers don't know where to find experts in, in particular areas unless they already have contacts in those areas. So the scientific societies, like the British Ecological Society, can really help form that bridge between policy and academia. They can help provide contacts, they can help provide um, networking opportunities, they can run joint conferences, joint meetings, where policymakers and scientists are both uh, present. And these are really good opportunities for researchers to make contacts and make networks within the policy area. Another thing that scientific societies can do is they can provide a louder voice compared to individual researchers. So if you think your research is policy relevant but you don't really know where to start, it's often a good idea to contact some of the scientific societies to discuss your findings and see if you can link with other people in, in the same area. The British Ecological Society policy guides are a really good example how the scientific societies can help bridge that gap between policy and, and research. They help researchers understand the policy making process and that's really important for people who are new to the policy world. And if you have a better understanding of how policy works, then you're much more able to engage with policy effectively. The biggest barrier to accessing research for most organisations is the cost. So if academic journals come up with different methods of funding to make open access more widely available, that would really help improve the access to research to a wider audience. In my experience, the best format of publication to reach policymakers is anything that is short and concise. Policymakers are very busy people and they don't normally have time to read lengthy reports. If you are published a journal article, try to condense that into a summary or think about publishing in an industry publication or a government publication like ENDS, for example. Part of my work at DEFRA with the Chief Scientific Advisor has been thinking about how to summarise evidence for policymakers because in my experience working with policymakers at DEFRA they need evidence which is really clearly laid out in a format that means that they can easily and quickly read the evidence and understand the main facts of that evidence base. So there, anything that is short, written in plain English, has an indication of the certainty in the evidence because having an indication of certainty helps you, un helps you balance up different policy options. And also something that is policy neutral, so that if you're writing something, try to make sure that you're, you're preparing something which is useful to both sides of a, of a policy divide. In my opinion, the top tips for getting research published are one, think of your key message and make sure that you've communicated that really clearly throughout the paper. Two, don't try to say too much. Often a simple, well-constructed argument or data set can be a much more effective method of communication. Three, try to think about the journal that you're submitting to and make sure that it's reaching the audience that you want to reach. My top tips for engaging with government are one, remember that policy is complex and multidimensional and 
academic research is only one part of policy considerations, so don't expect your research to be considered automatically. Two, start engaging early and make sure that you don't engage just as an afterthought or to try and have impact because it takes time to build up those relationships with policymakers. So starting early is always a good idea. Three, keep an eye out for opportunities to provide information, provide evidence and consultations or calls for evidence. There are also opportunities to work in secondments, on placements, attend conferences or networking events. And these are all really good ways of building up policy contacts and also learning more about the policy world. Four, get out there and make contacts, but also maintain those contacts because often uh, an effective policy contact is built on trust and a track record. So spending time um, building up that trust with the policymakers you work with can be a really effective way of engaging. Often you may need to respond really quickly to policymakers' requests and they need reliable evidence. So if you can respond quickly without lobbying and provide reliable evidence that you'll often get asked back to contribute again. Engaging with policy can be really frustrating but it can also be really rewarding and I think it's important to remember that it takes time. It's something that you build up over, over your research career. Um, and try to start small, start with knowledge exchange, start with building contacts and building up those trust and reliable contacts with policymakers. And if you don't know where to start, look to the scientific societies like the British Ecological Society to help you. The British Ecological Society Policy Fellowships are a really good opportunity for mid-career researchers to work in a government department. They benefit government by providing access to expertise and they also really benefit the researcher by exposing them to the policy making process.